I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my series on fractions. We will master steps to add and subtract fractions in this particular video. So the major question here is how do we add or subtract fractions? Well, it was a very difficult question for me during my school days. In junior schools, I never understood how to add fractions. Very confusing. So now at this stage, I thought I'll share some experience and come out with a way of uh, sharing with you how fractions could be added or subtracted. So in this video, we'll talk about these things. First, concept. The basic concept is somehow we have to get the same denominator, right? So when we write 1 over 2, 1 over 4, 1 over 8, Numbers like this are called fractions. If we have to add them up, we need to write them all with same denominator. Now, when we do that, then we call them as equivalent fractions, right? So the equivalent fractions are same fractions written with different numerators and denominators. So half, for example, could be written as 4 over 8. So the other circle which I have drawn here is showing the same thing but with different equivalent fractions. 1 over 8 as 1 over 8, 1 over 4, multiplying both by 2, I get 2 over 8. They are equivalent fractions. Half is same as 4 over 2, right? You can see here, if I take away these four slices, it is half of the pizza gone. Does make sense to you. This is quarter, 1 fourth, same as having two slices one eighth each right so that is one eighth so i hope with this diagram you are getting an idea of equivalent fractions well these equivalent fractions really help us how let us see uh, how with the help of an example okay so let me pull out my first example here uh, which is something like this scary problem question number one a pizza is shown with one eighth slices. I kept half for myself and shared one fourth with Kate and one eighth with Dave. What fraction of pizza is left? Well, this is not so difficult since I have shown you the diagram here. Imagine that this is not there. Okay, now let's read the question. A pizza is shown with one eighth slices. That is gone. Now I'm starting my question from this stage. I got a pizza. I kept half for myself and shared one fourth with Kate and one eighth with Dave. What fraction of pizza is left? How do I do it? Well, probably calculator can help me. Well, nothing else. But see how I did it. I actually made a circle showing that this is my pizza, right? And then I divided that into some equal parts. By intuition, I thought eight will be a good number, right? So I didn't know how many parts, but I thought eight will be a good number. We are talking about half, one fourth. So one fourth, let me take eight slices. Well, and then I worked it out. It became simpler, right? So how it became very simple? Since I kept half for myself, so I shaded half of it. You see that, right? I shaded half of it. I kept half for myself. And then one fourth means a quarter, right? So this is the quarter I gave away to Kate. And then one eighth to Dave. What is left? Now it was much simpler. Since I divided my pizza into eight equal parts, I know this one is one out of eight. So amongst these options, one over eight, one over four, one over two, and one, I do get the answer one over eight as the correct answer. Do you see that? Well, now the question comes, why did I use 1 8th, right? Okay, let's get back to what we were talking about. 
So here is the same problem, right? Now the idea is we need to find the common denominator. So in our example, what did we do? Let's look into it once again. What did we do? We are talking about three fractions. I kept half for myself, which is the number half. I shared one fourth with Kate, one fourth, and then one eighth with Dave. So one eighth, right? So these are the three numbers we are working with. Four, two, and eight. Two, four, and eight. Now, eight is the common multiple, right? So we know two multiples are two, four, six, eight. Four multiples are four, eight. Eight is common. And then we already have eight. So what we found that the lowest common multiple was eight. So I could have a common denominator of eight. So that gives me a common denominator of eight. Perfect. And that means what should I do? I should have eight slices. To get immediate answer. Does it make sense to you? So what I did was actually I looked into the numbers half, one fourth, and one eighth. Denominators are two, four, and eight. I need common denominator, and I found their multiples, and I saw that eight is common, and therefore I divided my pizza into eight equal parts, and now I could share easily. Half of that meant one, two, three, four slices. One fourth meant two slices, one eighth means one. Adding these, I got seven slices, one was left. So one eighth was left. Does it make sense? Okay, so here is the summary of what I did. Got it? Let's look into it once again. So first, I found that in my question, I was working with three numbers. Half, right, one fourth, and one eighth. Then I found the lowest common denominator. Right? So I found that the for these numbers eight is common multiple. So when I found that eight is common multiple, I wrote equivalent fractions with eight as my common multiple to make. 2 as 8, I multiplied by 4, so I got this as 4 over 8, and the other one, I multiplied by 2, I get 2 over 8, and this one already had 8, 1 over 8. So here is my modified diagram with same denominator. Do you see that? And equivalent fractions. So now I have here equivalent fractions, 4 over 8, 2 over 8, 1 over 8. Do you see that? So here I have half of it, which I kept for myself. Right? 2 eighths, which I gave to Kate. And 1 eighth, which I gave to Dave. So if I count these numbers, I have 8 slices. 1 eighth each. Correct? How many are accounted for? 4 plus 2 plus 1, which is 7. So left is 1 slice of 1 eighth. Does it make sense? So I solved my problem in this fashion. And that is how we are actually going to work with fractions. We can add and subtract. So here, we added all of them, took away from one whole. Do you see that part? So in a way, with a simple problem, we actually went through all the steps involved. But what we are going to do now is master the techniques, right? So we'll master the technique of making equal fractions. We'll master the technique of making common denominators. And we also call them least common denominators. How do we get least common denominators? And if you get an answer, sometimes we may have to write the answer in the lowest terms. 
Well, when you add, you are getting bigger terms. We might have to write them in lowest terms. We will see that also. And then we'll practice with multiple choice questions and open response problem based questions. So that is a key for us since these days, many test papers will have multiple choice questions and open response based questions. So I hope you are ready for it. So the video is going to be a bit long. Let us take our time to digest what we have learned about working with fractions, especially how to add them and subtract them with the help of this example. So I'd like you to just digest this part and then will actually bombard you with another 10 questions which will help you to understand the complete concepts and master the techniques. I hope you like the idea. Feel free to share your views and suggestions and also the questions. Thank you and all the best.